Hi, my name is Alex Thomas. I am a vulnerability researcher with WordFence. And in this video, I will be doing a technical walkthrough of CVE 2024-4434, which is a SQL injection vulnerability in the LearnPress plugin versions 4.2.6.5 and prior. This vulnerability was submitted to us on April 29th, 2024, and it was fixed in early May of last year. It was submitted to us by researcher Leet Wannabe, and Leet Wannabe earned $1,376 for this submission. Now, if you are interested in vulnerability research, head over to the bug bounty page on wordfence.com and sign up as a researcher, and also hit that Discord link to join our Discord server. Let's get to it. I am running Fedora in a virtual machine. For my WordPress instance, I am using WP Engine's local. As you can see here, my site name is local2. It is on localhost port 10,004. The web server I am running is Apache. The PHP version is 8.4.4. Database is MySQL 8.0.35. And as you can see here, I have Xdebug enabled. And we are running WordPress version 6.8.1. And then I will also be using Burp Suite. Let's go ahead and open that up. Temporary project to memory, Burp defaults. All right, and then from here, I'm going to open my Burp browser. Let's navigate to our WordPress site. There it is, and let's log in. All right, so we are in our admin dashboard. Let's go over to plugins, and we can see that we have LearnPress installed, and it is the vulnerable version. I do have to do one thing here real quick, and that is to set up the Midim dump. Oh, it's already set up. There it is right there in my terminal. Uh, and the reason why I want to set this up is because sometimes Burp browser will respond with an error, especially when logging into WordPress or doing a variety of functions in WordPress, it will respond with an error. And I'm not sure why that happens, but using an extra proxy fixes that issue. So let's do that real quick. So I have a minimum dump set up on port 8083. I'm gonna go to my proxy settings here, edit my proxy, go to request handling, uh, redirect this to minimum dump. Okay, that should prevent any errors from the burp browser. Let's just reload that to make sure it works and it does. Let's head over to this flow diagram that I've created in Obsidian and let's take a look at the request, the request with our payload in it. So again, this is a SQL injection and the SQL injection is in the term ID parameter. The vulnerable endpoint is this REST API endpoint. And you can see that by looking at the route, which contains this WP JSON route right here. So we know that it is a REST API endpoint. And then anything after that is what the plugin has registered using the register REST route function for WordPress. Here, we are again sending this request to our WordPress instance, and then we have the required content type header here. And I also want to note that uh, when this vulnerability was submitted, there was a little piece that the researcher added on getting the XWP nonce or the WP REST nonce. That is actually not needed for this request because when the REST route is registered by the plugin, it's permission is set to universally true. Therefore, it can be accessed by an unauthenticated user. So anytime in WordPress, whenever we send a request to WordPress, any request at all, WordPress will load any plugin that is installed and activated. And the way it does that is it looks for the main plugin file. So you'll have a folder within the WP content plugins folder for your specific plugin. And within that folder, so here it's WP content plugins, LearnPress. And within LearnPress, we'll have our main plugin file, which is denoted by this header right here. That's how WordPress knows. This is where we start to load the plugin. Let's walk through this flow 
of exploitation. So we are sending our request in to WordPress and WordPress is loading the LearnPress plugin. At the very bottom of the LearnPress.php file, uh, you will see that an instance of the LearnPress class is loaded. So let's head over to the LearnPress class. And anytime you instantiate or, or create an instance of a class, its constructor is called. And so here we are calling the init hooks method. So we go down to init hooks. Here our init hooks function is declared. And then here we are adding an action to plugins loaded. Now somewhere else in WordPress code, there is a do action function that is triggering the plugins loaded action. And here we're hooked into that action and we have our callback function plugins loaded. And so if we go down here to plugins loaded, you can see that the init function is called. And then when we call our init function, we are instantiating a new LP core API class. All right, so let's head down here. Hopefully you can see this okay. So our LP core API class is located in the class LP core API.php file. This extends the LP abstract API class. Its constructor is called, of course, because it is instantiated, and then it calls the parent constructor. So we're calling the constructor of the LP abstract API class. So let's head over there real quick. All right, so here's our LP abstract API class, which is in the abstract rest api.php file. And then here again, the constructor is called, and then we call the rest API init method. And then within this method, we know that have another hook and we are hooked to rest API in it, which then calls this callback function rest API register routes. Now, if we go down to rest API register routes, what happens here is we have a for each loop that goes through a list of controller names. And eventually we get to this one right here, which is LP rest courses controller. And then we call its register routes method. So let's scroll down here. So we have the register route method, which is in the, again, LP REST courses controller class. And here is where we register the archive course endpoint. So if we just scroll back out here, over here, you can see that our request is going to the archive course endpoint, right? Let's head back over here to our register REST routes. So when we are registering our REST route, you can see that this REST route accepts all methods. So it could be a get request, post request, and so on. Then we have our callback which is our callback function. When this route is called, this is the function that is called and is called list courses, which is down here. And then earlier we talked about that permission callback. As you can see, it returns true. So any unauthenticated user can access this endpoint. And then finally, there are no arguments for this specific endpoint. Here we have the list courses function, which is again, the callback function for this route. And here what we do is we instantiate an instance of the LP course filter class, and we assign that to the filter variable. And what that does is that LearnPress is essentially going to take a number of values that are supplied in a request, and it is going to build out a SQL query. And in the LP course filter class, we have a number of properties for this constituent components of the SQL query. So if we actually take a look over here, hopefully you can see this. This is actually a debug session in Visual Studio Code, where I am hovering over filter. And as you can see, these are those constituent components of the SQL query. So you have a set, you have your where, your join, union, and a whole bunch of different properties right here. And it, as you can see, we have our term IDs right here. And if you remember in the request, the vulnerable parameter is term IDs. And then we are also passing to the handle params for query courses method. We are handling this request get params. So this is where our request parameters come from and their values. So you can see right here, this is of type WP rest request. You can see that the method is post. You can see the information in the body of the post request. Here's our term ID parameter with our payload. So the guy gets passed to the handle params for query courses function. All right. So again, we have instantiated our LP course filter or an instance of our LP course filter class. And then from here, we pass that filter as a parameter to the courses class handle params for query courses method. And then we also pass in our request and that request contains our payload. So let's go down here. Once this is done, we are then calling the get courses method of the LP course 
class and we are passing now that filter which has been populated with our payload along with the number of total rows so if we go down here query parameters get passed here is our get courses method of the LP course class and then as you can see we call this get courses function for an instance of the LP course DB class and again we are then passing a filter to that as well and then we are assigning that to the courses variable so let's follow that all right so now we are in the LP course DB class and the get courses method. And this is where our term IDs get handled. And as you can see, if you take a look at this code, if term IDs are not empty, and again, we are looking at this filter object, then we start to build our query. And the especially important part here is where we are building the where portion of our SQL query, and that gets done down here. So we are doing a join with comma, and then we are passing in our term IDs. So if there are multiple term IDs, it will handle that. That gets placed into term IDs format. And then term IDs format, as you can see, gets built with this string for the final SQL query. And you can see this gets placed into the filter object where array. And then eventually we take this down and send this to the execute method. And we were again passing in. So we're, we're filling out this filter object. We were filling the properties with all of the values relevant for the SQL query. And then we are finally passing this to the execute method. All right, so let's scroll down here to the execute method. And this is where we build the final query. So in class LP db.php, we have the LP database class, and this is where we have the execute method. And then if you take a look here, you can see that our where is being built, the where part of the SQL query. And then as we we continue the full query gets built with all of these variables and here is our where right here and then finally we make our way down to get results and the query gets passed in all right so let's take a look at what the final SQL query looks like if we take a look at our SQL query, we can see that our sleep is injected into the final query right here. And now what we can do is we can actually take this query right here and we can actually go to add miner and we can test it. So let's head over to our Chromium browser. Add miner is on port 10,005. So we'll go to localhost 10,005. So we'll just not use the burp browser and use Firefox. So here in AdMiner, which is our graphical interface for database management for our WordPress instance, you can see that we're on the local database for local two. Let's run our queries. We're gonna hit the SQL command right here. We're gonna paste this in and then we're gonna clean this up a little bit. Let's make sure this looks okay. All right, so we have our SQL query and we can see here is our injection right there. That's where we have injected in the term ID parameter and we can see that our commenting is working right there. And let's execute that. As you can see, it's taking some time to respond and that is because our sleep is working and the SQL query executed correctly. And we can also do that uh, in the browser with our post request or within Burp Suite. Let's see here. So we can go to our HTTP history. We can go ahead and, and grab a legitimate post request here. We can right click on it and we can send it to Repeater. In Repeater, I'm actually gonna just head over to our payload here and we can just copy and paste this in. And then we can do the same thing here. So I'm gonna do a send. As you can see, we have a bit of delay before our response. And if we wanna test that even further, we can do something like 10 second delay. Let's see. And you can see it's taking a lot longer to respond. All right. So now we have our response, and as you can see, that sleep is working. Now that we know that our payload is working, we've tried a couple different numbers in here, two and 10, and we know this sleep is getting passed through. Let's head over to SQL map. What we're gonna use SQL map for is to extract 
the WP users database table. Let's take a look at this. We have SQL map. We are sending that request to our vulnerable endpoint. We are specifying our request body. So that is within the data flag. So we have our term ID and I just put equals one just so you have a, a normal value there. Uh, and then we pass via the P flag, the vulnerable parameter, which is term underscore ID. The minus uppercase D flag is our database. Actually, I think the database name is local. If I'm not mistaken, let's just confirm that real quick. It is indeed local. And then the database table is this uppercase T flag, which is WP users. Then we're going to use the dump flag to dump the database table entries. And then we're going to use the batch flag. As you can see down here, it says never ask for user input, use the default behavior. And then we're going to use this time sec 10 flag, which increases the delay for the default DBMS response, which is five. I think that helps. It helps SQL map when there's like, I guess like a, some network latency. So that will hopefully be a little bit better for us. We don't run into any errors. And then let's head over to the terminal and run that. Hopefully you can see this okay. I'm gonna paste this in. There we go. Okay, this is going to take some time. So we will just leave this here. Oh, there it goes actually. I had actually run this before on my machine, so it looks like uh, it pulled us information from cache, which is great. We don't have to wait for it. So usually with a time-based SQL injection, it will take some time to determine the contents of the table that you are pulling from the database. So you might have to wait several minutes for it to return all of that information. It also depends on how much information you have in the database. Here, I just have a single user, just the admin user. But as you can see, we were able to get these details from the WP users table, and we also retrieve the hash of the admin user. Now that we have uh, retrieved our hash, I'm just going to follow through just for fun. And we are going to crack this hash with Hashcat. So let's go over to Obsidian. Let's grab our Hashcat command. And I want to note that in WordPress versions 6.8 and greater, there is a new hashing function that has been added. So the hashes in WordPress are going to look different. I believe they were previously MD5 hashed. Now we have a SHA-384 pre-hashed password and then that is also passed to bcrypt and so i've done some things here because hashcat hasn't been updated to handle this type of hash so i had to do some pre-hashing but the output should be roughly the same let's go over here copy our hashcat command here we go so we are running hashcat with mode 3200 and mode 3200 is bcrypt i am passing a stripped hash and actually we can just take a look at that real quick so cat wp stripped hash as you can see i just removed this dollar sign wp from the front leaving our bcrypt hash to be passed to hashcat and then i am using a sha384 prehashed rockyou word list and then we have the minus zero force i think force is specifically to enhance this operation when there is no gpu for password cracking so let's go here uh, oops let's fix that real quick this is in documents word lists there we go so now we have hashcat running and Let's give it a second. So we can see here that the password has been cracked. Now I have a reverse map Python script to convert this SHA-384 hash to ASCII text. So let's run that. Let's give that a second. So what this is doing is that I've actually taken the entire Rocky word list and I've rehashed each entry with SHA-384 and this actually reverse maps that. So it takes the cracked hash and it compares it against this table and then reverse maps it back to the original ASCII Rocky password word list. And there we go. And we can see that our cracked password is princess, which is indeed the correct password for my admin account. All right, so that is CVE-20 
324-4434, our LearnPress SQL injection in the term ID parameter. Hopefully you learned something there. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below, or you can join our Discord server and leave a comment there or ask any questions you would like. Thank you so much.